So I think he would really, really be so thrilled, right? Perhaps jumping up and <laughs> falling off his chair would say, oh goodness. fifth-generation descendant of Captain Yap Aloy. My name is uh, Yap Suk Ping. I'm Glenn Yap, and I'm the fifth generation of Yap Aloy. Well over a century ago, there was a man, one of the many thousands of Chinese migrants who had left China for foreign shores in search of a better life. He landed in Malacca first in 1854 before making his way to what is now known as Kuala Lumpur. It was through his hard work, perseverance and entrepreneurship that he became compelling, influential and rich in Malaya. He had contributed to Malaya and specifically Kuala Lumpur by building many public amenities such as schools, hospitals, temples, homes for the aged, among many others. This man was the third Captain China of Kuala Lumpur, Yap Aloy, seen as an inexhaustible person who was deeply committed to developing Kuala Lumpur into a thriving metropolis and ultimately establishing it as our nation's capital. The vibes, culture, and lifestyle speaks to his great-grandchildren of five generations in a special series in conjunction with the 50th Golden Jubilee year of Kuala Lumpur since becoming the first settlement in Malaysia to be granted city status on February 1st, 1972. Okay, uh, I think the challenge comes from uh, Captain Liu Ngim Kong's relatives. Uh, actually, Captain Lim Ngin Kong and uh, Yam Aloy uh, knew each other for a long time. Okay, even in Sungai Ujong, they were close. And when Captain Liu came to Kuala Lumpur, became the second captain of China, Captain China, he invited uh, Yam Aloy to come over to help him to manage his businesses. So when Captain Liu was uh, very sick at the time, he actually uh, asked for Yam Aloy to see him. And uh, he informed Yam Aloy that he will uh, appoint Yap Aloy as the third captain China of Kuala Lumpur. And prior to this, uh, Captain Liu and Sultan Puasa actually met with uh, Sultan of Selangor, that time was Sultan Abdul Samad, to propose that Yap Aloy became the third uh, captain. So after all this was done, uh, when Captain Liu passed away, Captain Yap Aloy came back from Klang to Kuala Lumpur to take his position. But unfortunately, Captain Liu's relatives thought uh, they should be the one of them should be the captain. So that was the cause of the friction. Uh, but luckily, uh, Sultan Puasa stepped in, explained the situation, and then uh, everything was fine after that. So uh, Captain Yang Aloy at the time uh, followed Captain Liu's wishes. Like, for example, Captain Liu wanted to be buried in Malacca. So Yang Aloy did all the, the funeral arrangements, uh, did all the uh, calculations and so on, and then paid the Captain Liu's relatives, what was due to them, and uh, Captain Yap took over Kuala Lumpur from Captain Liu. Uh, I must tell you about this turnaround point. This is the highest point of KL. This point came when, first of all, there was a big war. Many of us younger gen in our history books, we don't know about the Selangor Civil War. It was fought over a few years, added in 1873. When the enemies were fleeing, they destroyed KL. Everything in KL, main KL, was burned. The stores, the mines, the shops, hangus semua. Then people started to leave. Hey, this place tak boleh lah, suai lah. Tak ada apa. They started to leave. But Yap Aloy asked them, he begged them to stay back. He really asked them sincerely, come on, let's build KL together. And then what he did also, because KL at the time was mainly Chinese. So he asked the Malays in the neighbouring area, we need your help also. 
please, please, grow more crops. We need the veggie, we need your, your paddy. Grow, grow more rice for us. So there was a lot of cooperation. And yeah, the Malays, the agriculture. And then he asked the Chinese to stay back. And then also what Yap Bawalu did is, he needed money to rebuild. So he took loans. Well, um, I heard, I mean, I read that he actually bought a piece of land for about, I think that at the time, Ringgit Malaysia, 20,000. Because he was instructed by Frank Swettenham, at the time, the British resident, to uh, rebuild um, the shop houses that was actually uh, destroyed by floods and also later by fire that same year. So he, yeah, he obliged and he actually did, um, you know, with the help of um, his workers, they actually dug out the mud from Klang River and to, to make into, uh, I mean, to burn them, you know, into bricks and rebuild the shop houses. And that's why he did also a contribution to that time, that era in rebuilding the shop houses. He built. He laid out infrastructure. He gave the he gave the rakyat of KL some amenities. So, for example, he built a very simple hospital hospice. It was for the sick people, and uh, it was very simple. Uh, it didn't have much systems or structure. And then he also set up the first school, the first Chinese school in KL, and also he set up a temple which uh, eventually became the temple which is now on Jalan Tun Hichesli, the Sin Si Sia Temple. Now, that is an iconic temple because it is said to be the oldest standing structure in KL. Yeah. And it's also one of the largest uh, Taoist Buddhist temples. Actually, the, the debate on founder has been on for a long time. There are two persons who actually first came to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, Hugh Siu and Yap Azi. And these are the two men that set up the trading post in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, this trading post was used to help bring the tin mine from Ampang, interior of Ampang, and to ship it to Klang. But like I say, they are forgotten, so nobody ever mentioned about them. Uh, of course, some say Raja Abdullah. Uh, Raja Abdullah, of course, he was the uh, first Raja to commission uh, Chinese to go into the interior of Ampang to mine tin, but that is Ampang, yeah. And then of course there was uh, there was also uh, uh, an area where they talked about Sultan Puasa. Sultan Puasa is actually a, a trader and also a miner. Uh, he doesn't does not at that time does not live in KL, yeah. So I think if you talk about founding the place or the first person at the place would be these two people. Well, I like you to use the word pengasas because it shines a proper light. Whereas, if I were to say, or if we want to say Yap Aloy is the founder, people would think, who found the KL? Siapa yang menjumpai KL? But Yap Aloy tak menjumpai KL. Yap Aloy mengasaskan KL. So, in 1959, DBKL, or sorry, it was known as City Council, KL City Council. So we had it as KLCC. KL City Council got Yap Aloy's daughter to cut the ribbon, the opening, the ribbon to open their celebration, their centenary celebration. It was something official. KL acknowledged Yap Aloy as a very key person in its development. Though the Capitan had to restore the city numerous times due to various catastrophes, it never broke his spirit, as is evident that his love for the city was infinite, shedding blood, sweat and tears. The Capitan was also regarded as a consummate gentleman and was given a seal of office and the Malay title Sri Indra Perkasa Wijaya Bhakti. I think nobody loves Kuala Lumpur more than Captain Yap Aloy, yeah, in that sense. Six years of civil war, uh, facing financial bankruptcy, uh, two fire and a flood, Captain Yap Aloy still stick in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah? In fact, he also named his sons after Kuala Lumpur. And his sons' names are uh, uh, very significant in the sense that each of the sons' name signify uh, Yap Aloy's condition in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah? Uh, when Yap Aloy was first made to become the Capitan, uh, his first son was born. Yeah? So that is the first time. Second time when uh, KL was 
prospering, second son was born. So he named his second son after that. And the third time was when Yap Allah, uh, when Kuala Lumpur was progressing very well, he named his third son after that. Yeah. But his actions speak, speak it all out. Uh, that he was very committed to, I'm, I believe he was, it was his innate, how to say, uh, commitment to, um, how to say, make a, a city out of KL. I think if he was a man who had, um, how do you say, he could foresee into the future that it would be a, it would benefit everyone, not just himself, but even for the people that he was living with at the time, the people that he was working with, the, even the, the Malay Sultans, you know, and then also the Chinese and Indians and other races, even the British at the time were already making their, their what do you call that, um, how do you say, influence, yeah, in, in KL. But it was, I believe, for all of goodwill, out of goodwill, I would say he was out of a muhiba spirit, I would say. Yeah, a muhiba spirit that he did his utmost to bring up Kuala Lumpur. To, of course, he did not foresee that the future would be what it is now, right? But he did his best, I believe. And I've heard he was a very strict and fierce man. Wherever he walked, people feared him. People feared him. And uh, so he was so stern and he had KL in real tight control that he only needed six policemen. Only six policemen. He also built a jail that could hold uh, uh, 50 or 60 people at that time. So even uh, if there was a coin on the floor, people were scared to pick it up. Some of his rules were so strict. Like, let's say if you're caught stealing, uh, you would be forced to parade around with your stolen goods Malunia, you know, really hardcore physical shame. And if, you, if it was a bigger, major crime, uh, it would be death. Back when he was in China, he used to, he fought with the Kerbau there also. The Kerbau scratched him, so he had a mark here. The mark looks like a Chinese character called Ren. Yeah. These are some interesting things about my great great grandpa. Yap Ola was given something like the Gelaran of Datuk Ship. Yeah? Uh, some of you might have heard it. It's not a very common Gelaran. It comes from the royalty. It's known as Sri Indira Perkasa Vijaya Bhakti, equivalent to Datuk Ship. Now, as a boy, I've heard stories about it. How some people said, some people went over to the, to, some people in KL, would beat a gong or sound the cannon. So as far as the sound is heard, that land is yours, the Sultan said. As far as the sound is heard, either the cannon or gong, that land is yours. One fine day a few years ago, I finally got that story in writing. So this is what happened. The Sultan got his men to go to the outskirts of Selangor with gongs, gongs, and sound the gong. And so Yap, uh, the Sultan brought Yap Aloy to a high place, which is Batu Caves. Yes, the Sultan, according to his article in the magazine, said the Sultan brought Yap Aloy up the highest place in Batu Caves and heralded to everyone, okay, this is Yap Aloy and I'm giving him this gelaran of Sri Indra Prakasa Vijaya Bhakti. And, and as far as the gong was heard, that land was his. So the Sultan gave Yap Aloy this title. And his installation, also as Capitan, was uh, one week long, those days. I was very surprised and at the same time also very elated uh, that he was recognised yeah, by also the, another, the Sultan of Selangor who also awarded him a kris, which I heard um, from my, uh, my... My father actually did show me, but it was just when I was very young, I remembered. It was wrapped up in some kind of uh, thick newspaper and cardboard but because the handle was loose, you know, so my dad wanted to have it, uh, an uncle approached him actually to, to offer to repair it because it was awarded by the Sultan of Selangor at that time. Lah. Although the legacy of the Kapitan remains complete as part of the rich Kuala Lumpur history, the family bond of the Yap Aloy clan has become stronger in recent years, making it possible for them to stay in touch and preserve their family heritage. About nine years ago, I first went to the graveyard, his graveyard, which is in the, at the Kuangtong Cemetery. And then there are associations of Chinese that would commemorate Yap Aloy once a year at his graveyard. 
it's a proper formal ceremony. And then it went on for a few years. I contacted Grace, uh, her family, and then eventually we met up and they came along. They went to the cemetery, the Kwangtung Cemetery in May 2017. And then we met later in July again. We had an epic family gathering at Waiming's parents' house. So, what would you think Yap Aloy would say about Kuala Lumpur today? Okay, I think he will fall off his chair out of happiness and excitement to see that, wow, you know, and the people that he worked with, wow, they've grown and thrived, right, in numbers, you know, in, uh, and the, uh, the, the, how to say, the modernness of the, 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 the city, you know, so the big and beautiful buildings now, yeah, coupled with all the, his, uh, the ancient, I mean, those build, buildings that he uh, built, uh, the shop houses, was, was actually also exemplified what actually he, uh, in China, that kind of, uh, especially in Brickfields, I read that also, the shop houses with the five foot pavement, yeah. So he copied that kind of uh, building design and he built that, had, it, had them built. Uh. So I think he would really, really be so thrilled, right? Perhaps jumping up and <laughs> falling off his chair, I would say. <laughs> oh, goodness. While Kapitan Yap Aloy helped raise Kuala Lumpur from an obscure mining village into becoming the most significant town in the Malay Peninsula and described as Mr. Kuala Lumpur until 1879 by British Orientalist J.M. Gullick, his descendants hope that the Kapitan's memory will remain pertinent until the end of time as one of the individuals who brought Kuala Lumpur to great heights. So I'm also determined to make my children realise this. We can't change history, we can't change who our ancestors are, right? So I have told them also that this is something to be proud of because he did something good, something to be remembered, you know, by the people of Malaysia, you know, and um, it somehow, whether we like it or not, it is still part of us. A, some, a bit of his blood still runs in us. If we know our, if we know the history of our great-grandparents, we should try to, uh, what you call, inculcate the knowledge and pass down to the future generations. Like for example, uh, for me personally, Captain Yaola was a great man. I find inspiration in stories. So that's why I, I do some research and compile the book. At the same time, share the book out with all my family members so that in hope that future generations will remember this great person. <music>